Thank y'all for tuning in for this week's segment of Chop the Rock. We are here filming in the Little Rock River Market's third floor kitchen with our friends from Dizzy's Gypsy Bistro, one of the most favorite restaurants here in the River Market District. Today we have got Darla, Amy, and Alan, and they are going to tell you a whole lot about Dizzy's. It's a super cool place. While they're doing that, they're going to teach us how to make a black bean turkey chili, which is perfect for parties, big events. Football fall. season. Yeah, fall, make it, keep it, freeze it, yeah. redo it, that kind of thing. And so um, it's going to be great. Let's go. OK. Well, I'm Darla. And one of the reasons we did this is, as Amy mentioned, it's very versatile. You can do anything from on Fritos, on tortilla chips, in a bowl, with crackers. Cheese cornbread. or no cheese, cornbread. Um, you can do a chili bar. We did chili tacos on Sunday when we ran through this recipe. It was a little wet. Mm. You'll have to drain it out, but it was really good. It was. Um, but we we played with it. You can also do like the mac, turkey mac, turkey chili mac. Mm -hmm. That's the way I like it. So it's versatile. It's healthy. Um, you'll see there's no oil. The turkey's very low fat, and everything's fresh. But we do want to make this easy for you. So first, we'll run through the ingredients. I want to cover a couple of things. We brought the salsa and the pico de gallo from the restaurant because we make that daily. It's very simple to simply go to Whole Foods, Fresh Market, Kroger, Kroger, anywhere nearby. Generally, they have fresh pico de gallo, or you can get it from us. You can get it from any of the Hispanic restaurants. The salsa, same thing. Great products on in the cold deli area. Um, you can. But that's easier though, I mean, because you, we were Way. talking earlier that you could spend hours and hours prepping all the things that go into this. Right. Or you can buy something that's prepackaged that's of a good. Pour it in. Yep, dump and, and go. And it's just as fresh as if you did it. A lot of those places are making it daily like we do. Right. So there's no reason. And it's also, from a cost perspective, you know, I've run the cost analysis between the two. If I'm going to buy a small portion for something like this, it's just as inexpensive. It's actually more inexpensive to purchase it at the grocery store pre-made than to try and make it. So keep that in mind as you embark on some of these recipes that seem daunting. They're not. Every bit of this was bought at the grocery store other than this and this. So you want to? It's uh, So chili is one of my favorite things to make. I wait for it to get cool outside so that I can start making chilies and soups. I love to start making my chili on Saturday morning when college football starts and then I can put it in a crock pot and continue to eat it on Sunday for NFL football. Um, it's great to have family friends over. It's great to send home with people. Um, I just like to have a lot of fresh ingredients in it. I uh, Parsley and cilantro are two of my favorite things to put into chili. And lime. And lime. Lots mm -hmm. of lime. Um, I love to top it with jalapenos. I love to top it with avocado, sour cream cheese. You know, they're calorie free, so you can put them on top of there. Um, peppers, corn, black beans, lots of tomatoes, just anything fresh. And it's really simple because you're all going to put everything into one pot and then you can kind of decide Cook it on low. Yeah. And don't cook it on high. No, don't do that because you'll burn it. <laughs> you'll ruin everything. <laughs> Including uh, your crock pot. Yes. 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 Crock pot chili is also very easy. Once you cook the, you got to cook your turkey first. Right. Yeah. To and bring it can, to temp. You can sub it out. You can do, you know, deer meat if you want to do that. You can do ground beef. You can do a vegetarian chili if you don't want any meat in there. You can do ground tur or ground chicken. There's all sorts of things you can do with chili. So many yeah. The most versatile foods. You can just customize it to the flavor that you're yeah. looking for. Right. Which makes this such a great a great thing that you can make over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And it keeps well, too. It so does. You can always freeze it. Right. Week. You know, when it snows, when we get all that nasty ice that we get here in central Arkansas, you can stick it in the freezer, and then when you can't make it to the grocery store or don't feel like cooking, thaw it, stick it in the microwave, you're good to go. I yep. mean, it's going to be like just me. as good. Perfect. Well, let's get going here. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. We've got a couple of pounds of ground turkey over here. It's 93.7. You can do 85.15. You can do uh, Kroger brand. You can get honeysuckle, any of that. Um, but we're going to get that probably medium heat and just make sure that you get that thoroughly cooked through. And I'm going to kind of chop it up so that we don't have huge pieces of turkey meat in there. First, she has cumin, black pepper, garlic, garlic salt, and I think this is regular salt, not sea mm -hmm. salt. You could also sub in sea salt, whatever you'd like to do, and ground pepper if you prefer that. So I'm going to take this over for her to use a seasoning as she cooks it. 
Thanks. And we may need to increase the temperature just to expedite a little bit. Uh, let me go there. Okay, we also, I did mention in handling, one thing we'd like to do, and I may like Diana, I know that on a previous segment with Kathy Webb, they covered food safety. Right. I'm going to hand these to you and let you explain yeah. that, and then I'm going to go over temps. Perfect. So we were talking earlier about, you know, it's super important that you have a great place to wash your hands. If you don't have that nearby, um, Darla's going to tell you how to make like a hand sanitizer if you're just not conveniently located to a sink in your kitchen. Some kitchens are just not set up on that great triangle like they suggest. Um, but another solution that you can use for when you're chopping and preparing things at home, and these are very expensive and widely available, pretty much any big box store you can find, are these great little flexible chopping boards. And they come in these three colors, not just because they're pretty, but also because the green is for using to chop up your vegetables, the red you use for your red meats, and then the yellow you would use for chicken. So you can use these, chop it up, dump it in the bowl, set it in the sink, and you avoid that cross-contamination. That's a way better thing than chopping up any of this stuff on a countertop, because you just might exactly. not wipe it clean enough, and the last thing you want to do is make yourself, your family, or your friends sick. Right, and if you're using porous cutting surfaces, such as this butcher block or chopping blocks, the cutting boards that we have here, you're going to want to sanitize those. And don't put your meat on those anyway. Don't put your just meat on that. Right in. Yeah. Also, use different knives. And in this situation, she had the color codes out. You can actually color code to each cutting piece. If you do not have this available, I made a really simple here we go. bleach bucket. So one thing we do is sanitize your surfaces with one cap of bleach to a gallon of hot water. If you're finished cutting, say you're dicing chicken, you're finished, put that in there until you can get it somewhere sanitary. Don't move it all over the countertop. It's safer that way. Right. Once you use things, put them in here to be sanitized, and you, but you don't want it to come into contact with your food. So then, the next thing you do is put it down away from your food. That way you don't splash what could be toxic and high concentrations on your avocados, and then ingest right. them. To right. keep it under and covered. That's okay. right. So, so that's just kind of a primer. Now with Amy's turkey, the health department gives restaurants certain guidelines to follow. Actually, they're hard and fast rules. What we typically do is go just even a little bit higher to ensure that all of the meats, once they're prepared, are safe. And I would take turkey to 170, 175, and just get a little meat thermometer. You can pop it right in there. If it goes to 170, pull it, you're good. Make sure you've chopped it. Make sure you get the the reading on the temperature. Uh, one of the thickest. Don't temp the outside of a burger. Temp the inside. Make and sure don't go all the way uniform. through and temp the bottom of the pan. Don't go either. all the way through. Right, right. Exactly. You have anything to add to that, Ellen? I know um, you've done serve safe. And, no. I mean, especially right. when you're cooking like ground turkey or ground beef, it's really easy because you want to make sure that everything gets brown. That's a really good like determination factor. As you can see, when I put it in the pan, it was almost a bright pink. You want to make sure that everything gets browned throughout. That's why I'm sitting here like going through it and chopping it up to make sure that every piece gets cooked. Right. right. And turkey, like when you're chopping, a, when you're cooking a ground turkey, you kind of do have to be a little bit more diligent with chopping it and stirring it around. It's kind of long. It's yeah, hard. Yeah. It clumps up more than a ground beef does. So you just, like Amy said, you want to get that really thoroughly done and you want to be extra careful anytime, um, especially with poultry mm -hmm. of any kind because that is a little bit more dangerous. And it pork, is. you also want to be very pork careful to get your well, pork your thoroughly done. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. And it's in a soup, so it's okay if it ends up just a little bit dry because you're going to put this. It will rehydrate and exactly. it'll boil. At, I mean, it will temp at boiling ultimately. Gotcha. gotcha. So, but more, more with the turkey burgers and the hamburgers. And I'm not anti beef, but one of the things that's great about this chili is what you'll see is there's hardly any fat. Right. And I love a good greasy burger now and then, but if I'm going to eat bowl after bowl after bowl of chili, I would mm -hmm. rather it not be ultra greasy. Um, so this is going to be a good, healthy option. It is. And she's got the seasoning. Do so you want to start? I put, um, um, yeah. I put a little bit of garlic salt in there, a little bit of regular salt in there, some ground black pepper, some fresh chopped garlic, which you can, you don't have to go buy the garlic cloves and chop it up at home. They've got them in the grocery store. Oh, um, those little jars of the pre minced yes, and yeah. the cooler section. They have Way squeeze to too now. Yeah, yeah that's I've awesome. That. And I have squeezable Square cilantro. Bars. Yeah, because I cook everything that I cook in my kitchen has tons of garlic, tons of onion. It's I just love those flavors. Um, I put a little bit of ground cumin in there, and 
that's pretty much it for right now until we add everything into the pot and then I'm going to use my trusty two arm chili mix which since we are in the south you can get it anywhere I moved to Arizona every winter I could not find it anywhere I had to have my mom ship it to me so I could make my chili there you go it's really inexpensive and it's got everything in there that you will need yeah for so chili. no sense in doing all of this from 100% right. scratch and spending hours in the kitchen because people at home they don't have time for that no. nobody nobody spices does can get expensive I mean when you have to buy every single spice that comes in that box and that box I want to say two dollars for everything right in there, right yeah yeah it's a great value absolutely so Alan what are you cutting up what kind of peppers are these well, these are red yellow and orange uh, bell peppers and just we are chopping these up we're gonna also put in some uh, fresh green jalapeno peppers and some onion so I noticed that sometimes when people are including peppers in a dish um, they will clean the seeds and the center part out um, and then other times not so what's the difference there is that just a matter of how much flavor you're trying to get in like how much spice you want to <laughs> I don't yeah. care and I like the seeds because I like a kind of an inconsistency in the food, not too mushy, not overall hard. Oh, like that And some of it is, crunch. I am lazy, and when I cook, I drink wine, so I get to the point where I'm just like, it's good. <laughs> and it, and it always fine. turns out fantastic. It turns, turns out fine, yeah. So, so know, don't overthink be, it. Right, it doesn't yeah. have to be so overthought, and you can just prepare it kind of the way that you like it. If you're good with peppers. If you don't like peppers, take them out. Right. It's not going to so change. This, yeah. yeah. Chop them smaller if you want to chop them yeah. smaller. Yeah, yeah you, you can get. sub out plenty of things in this chili. Put what squash are, in there if you want to put squash in there. If you want to do yeah. more of a vegetarian chili, you could serve that over spaghetti squash. Oh, that yeah. would be super Ooh, good. That would be delicious and healthy if you don't want to, to do pastas or uh, chips mm -hmm. or even like a rice Rogers. or beans or anything yeah. like that. You could go with that. You too, go so. spaghetti squash and just flip it up, side, cut it in half, flip it up in the over in the oven, bake Kinda, it, and then mm, shred it up. Mm, Add some butter on it. It'll be good. Okay, okay, so, so what next? here we are. So we have got the, the ground turkey is cooking and then we are um, adding those seasonings. And so let's run through the rest of the ingredients that will go into the chili itself. But we can be a little bit more specific so that at home you have a little bit of a better guideline to follow if you're not comfortable enough in the kitchen just hand fulling it in. Okay. Some people are, some people aren't. Start we'll low this. and move up. Don't throw a cup of salt in anything. No. Yeah. Just start by pinch, pinch by pinch, taste it. Be a cook. Stir it up, taste it. I like that. Now, also remember, as you salt and add heat, it will it, it intensifies, and the more moisture that cooks out. Depending, we're also going to talk about whether or not you like thick chili. We didn't bring the masa, did we? Yeah, we there's can talk masa. There's okay. masa in the two worms. Okay, there. good. We can talk about. I like chili kind of soupy, which is odd. Most people like chili thick. Um, they can do that, but as that cooks out, as the liquid cooks out, it becomes saltier and the flavors become more intense. So don't ruin your pot of chili trying to overdo it or do it all at once and then go outside. You might want to stand there for a little while and stir and taste and stir and taste and then be cool with it. Put the lid on it, let gotcha. it simmer, come back. Yeah, and I you mean, can use a chip. These are unsalted chips and I use these because you get a true flavor of the food. What a great idea. Without added salt. Great, great. Yeah, because so. you also don't want to you know, use the spoon, take a sip, put the spoon right. back in, that okay. kind of thing as add, well. You're adding the peppers I just and stuff. got finished, yeah, I just got finished cooking the ground turkey. Um, so what I'm doing is I've got, and if you want to, you can put a little bit of butter in your pot or in your crock pot. But what I'm doing is I'm pretty much gonna saute some of the bell peppers and the onions with a little bit of garlic. I'm also gonna add some garlic salt, black pepper, and a little bit of regular salt in there. We're just going to saute them down just a little bit. Okay. Um, then I'm going to add the ground beef in there, and then pretty much we're going to throw everything else into the pot. Keep stirring it. Keep Let it cook. It. Yeah, and we're good. Okay. Yeah. It's so really I won't be easy. de these jalapenos because they are ridiculously hot when they're fresh. <laughs> So, Alan, while they're doing that, tell us what we've got. We've, we've seen the bell peppers. We have seen the jalapenos. You've pretty much put a whole red onion in there. Yep, uh, one and a half red onions. We've got some black bean and some corn here, some uh, chopped up cilantro and parsley. We've also got some canned diced tomatoes you can get at Kroger, Fresh Market, Walmart, and also um, some tomato sauce you can get the same place. And that's just tomato sauce. Just regular tomato sauce and then Generic. two cans of uh, diced tomatoes. Gotcha, gotcha. And do the limes go into this part or is that for the... the we'll after? actually squeeze it. We'll yeah. squeeze the lime into this okay. as it cooks. And, and you can also, also top tenderizes it. it. Yeah. You can gotcha. also top it. Give it that extra little kick. Yep. Gotcha. Place. Great, great. Okay, so are we so ready? So she's got those One cooking in. One of the things in. I absolutely love about ground turkey, my dad is red meat all the way. I made ground turkey for him. It grows turkey show. chili. There's where we are. He could not tell the difference between you can and turkey and we're about to add some other ingredients. So much healthier. 
It's also because she's a very good cook. Thanks. Well, you know, you can do that, though. If you've got someone that you're trying to get on a little bit of a healthier diet, mm -hmm. even if it's yourself and you're trying to make a healthy change. Trick yourself. Trick yourself. And so chili is something that you can, I mean, chili. Chili, you can substitute lots of things in, yeah. but turkey meat or another poultry has such a mild flavor to it. It's adaptable to that many it is. dishes. Then yeah, most it is. people wouldn't know the difference. And so try that. Give it a try, first of all, in something that's very flavorful, like a chicken, I mean, or like a chili. And then you may end up being able Able to kind of train yourself to use it Spaghetti, in some lasagna, dishes. there's so many. I've had turkey Absolutely. meat, love turkey burgers. They're all good, and the ground chicken's good as well. Well, I also like, and I know this will be bizarre, but I would eat it the exact same base with tofu mm. or vegetarian, just more beans. You could do three beans. What are some other things? Beans, corns, black, uh, um, black beans. You could throw squash. carrots. I did quinoa. I've done quinoa, quinoa in works before in there very because well. it kind of makes that that See? thickness that you would get with meat. Yeah. Um, more black beans is mm -hmm. better, and you know a lot of people I may. I that quinoa. That sounds good. It's really try good. I, I tried it once, just to, just to have kind of something different, Might you know, as well. but yeah. just experiment a little bit. And a lot of people will put those big chili beans or kidney beans in their yep. chili, and I, they're just too much bean for me. Yeah. So I have been substituting black beans in my chili for years, and yeah. it's and you can put more of them, but you don't feel like you have just a big old mouthful of bean too. So. Yeah, and see, I, I like that. I yeah. like the vegetarian. And what are some other Quinoa well, I've not tried, but tofu, but I've had, what, there's a good brand of canned vegetarian chili, and I guess it's tofu in it, it's excellent. How do you do that when you do the tofu? Do you chop it up really small, or you, you kind of mashing? it small, and maybe, sometimes, no, I'd probably flash fry it, and then drop it in, ah. and let it just absorb, you could put for maybe 20 minutes. minutes. Ooh, eggplant eggplant's good. a good idea. So, so again, we're, we're talking about how this is not a science. Right, this is this very is a, flowing. This is a creative art where if you do not over season with heat or salt or sugar, you're probably okay to play with all of your favorite foods. And this is basically a, basically a conduit for right. people's preferences. Well, so you wanna if, have fun with it. If you're at <laughs> home and you're cooking and, and you don't have any recipe that you're following and you're just kinda winging it and going by hand, um, have a notebook and a pen beside you, and if you if you think you like it, then jot it down. And eventually, when you get to the end, you can kind of mash up what you have and hopefully have a recipe. Yeah, or do's and don'ts. Yeah, I like this. I didn't like that. Yeah. Or let's recreate this again. And so that's a great lead-in talking about the creativity and cooking because that is exactly fun. what y'all do at oh, yeah. Dizzy's. You Very have such so. a fun environment in the restaurant in general, cool. and the menu is so eclectic. So tell me a little bit about. You know, kind of what inspires you <clears throat> with your menu and what you're trying to offer to people because it is a very, very popular place. How long have y'all been in the district? We've been down here eight years in November and we've been in business 22 years. So we really don't have a, just in the same way we're cooking now, we don't have a hard and fast planned menu. What we do often, and by the way, Another way to take a shortcut is instead of chopping a lot more onion and jalapenos and tomatoes, Add we more. use the pico in the sauce. There you go. Go ahead and pour the pico in the sauce, and we're going to put some of the salsa in the sauce. It'll freshen it up and make it taste good. Gotcha. Okay, so back you can to buy the concept. A, a yes. bigger one of these and use that if you didn't and have to. And cut out some chop. of your other prep gotcha. if you want to. So yeah. you can so go it's easy. fast. Yeah. It's very easy. Now, what we've, what we've done, kind of a cool aspect of some of our recipes, is we, if I travel, a lot of, if you're in Spain and you go to a man and say, I have a restaurant, and they will take you to their restaurant to teach you to make, I learned to make feta cheese cream sauce, blue cheese cream sauce, the pesto soup, all those are rotated off and on the menu seasonally. Um, but I also will take, for instance, the white wedding cake, which we have baked. Um, I love it, but I'm tired of going to weddings. Right. So I just right. want the cake. Things like chicken spaghetti, you know, things that are comfort foods. What we have are, it's an American cuisine take on, comfort food take on international foods and some cultural iconic but church chicken spaghetti. Oh yeah, what we're all used to at every potluck I love that, that we've grown up on, yeah, absolutely. It's awesome. So we just made an upscale chicken spaghetti. I don't love dark meat and I don't, I don't like to be like, what was that? So, right. Uh, which you get at church chicken with you, church chicken spaghetti. You do, yes. Yeah, and um, and a lot of canned mushroom soup. So we don't do that. We right. do it with a different twist. It's fresh. It's good. The Electra's casserole is a chicken and rice and mushroom casserole that you get. Which is a standard we've church. all grown up on right. in the South, either at your grandma's house or at church. Right. 
and, and so, but to bring that into the restaurant and right. offer that kind of thing, that, and people have gotten away from cooking. Right, right. Yeah, and, well, they're very high maintenance because to make an electra, you have to grill your chicken, hand cut your mushrooms, cut up your garlic, make your bechamel, basically make the alfredo, buy your parmesan, have a salamander to broil it. So we can make it, Ellen can make it in six minutes yeah. there you at the go. restaurant. So, so it's all done. Don't make the electric I mean, casserole. It'll be $17 and he'll get you. Don't eat, worry about eat it. Eat it at Dizzy's. That's just the easiest thing to do. So it's comfort food. Do. Again, it's, it's foods that we take food very seriously, food quality. I am not, and I love experimenting with the restaurants where you go in and there's a scallop and one dot of something on top. Mm -hmm. I like that, but we are in the deep south. And I would rather just give people a big bowl of really good food that they they're mm -hmm. really excited about. Yeah, yeah. That they can split half of it off and take it home. That's right. That's and, right. And maintain the quality. Absolutely. Spend our money on the quality of food, the expedition. From behind the door. And it's it's a. Um, We're going to show you, know, you a, a little bit of this. That's right what the chili's now. looking like right now. In that two alarm chili mix, it's got uh, masa flour in there. So if you want to thicken your chili up some, you can add that masa flour in there. Okay. And if you want it even thicker than what the masa flour in the box gives you, you can always just get a little bit of the all-purpose flour you keep in your cupboard with a little bit of water and stir it up and add it to Paper it. Paper mache it'll, like stuff. Yeah, it'll About give it a that thickening thickness. agent. Yeah. yeah, we always put it in a little tiny whisk mason it. jar and shake it up mm -hmm. and then put it in there. Pour it in cold and then whisk mm -hmm. it as it goes in. Mm -hmm. It won't lump up on you. And it's very easy. It's a good trick to thicken things up and stretch things out. Absolutely. If you're on a budget, mm -hmm. you make can use that. Further. And it's, a cream soup is more expensive to make than a clear broth generally. Y'all are just doing some great things at Dizzy. You have live music there. Three nights a week we have live music. Okay. We do no cover. No cover and that starts what, eight o'clock? No, we go 6 to, what, 6 to 8.30? 6 to 8.30. 6 to 8.30, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. And then Friday and Saturday, occasionally we will have, we'll have live music, but it pays to call on those nights. Um, it's fun. We do have, of course, we pipe in happy fun music because we think that's important. It absolutely is I don't is like important. quiet restaurants. We're not super loud, but we do try to have the artsy, colorful, everyone's friendly. We work on that all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Because we do represent Little Rock in being downtown in the tourist, the tourist the area. And right and on the, the trolley travel. stop, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The trolley guys are great. The hotels are wonderful. I mean, we've grown. The developers and the city leaders have done a great job helping ensure that, it, that what the impetus they had continues to move forward. Whether Absolutely. they're pitching another section of the, large, the bike trail, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. It takes a long time to rebuild. We've done an excellent job rebuilding. So y'all have plated this up as we've just been kind of chatting, and I mm -hmm. hope that y'all can see at home how absolutely gorgeous this bowl of chili is here. And it smells great, and it cooked quickly. I mean, obviously the longer, TV magic. right, it's TV awesome magic. magic. We would really cook it another hour and a half on low. Right. At so least, we'll yeah. try to be honest. And we then don't want you could even much. cook it overnight. Chili is one of those things Crock that pot. gets better the longer it cooks. Absolutely. After the turkey comes to temp, yeah. then you can cook the chili overnight. Yes. That's right. Pot. And on I just yeah. want to point out that when I was getting all the ingredients yesterday for this chili, it cost about forty dollars for everything, and this could probably feed fifteen or twenty people. That's how darling I like to cook. We mm -hmm. feed armies pretty much. So that's two dollars a head, and you. This is a meal with all four food groups mm -hmm. right now, right here in this bowl, because you've got your meat, avocado. you've got your vegetables, you have some chips, or you could sub that out again with cornbread, right. rice, crackers, crackers macaroni. macaroni. Um, a butternut or a, a, a spaghetti, spaghetti squash. squash. I'm so gonna do that. This I know. Fall. I have too. I want one now. I like to do spaghetti squash with spaghetti. Yes. Like to sub oh, it yeah, out for that really too. Good. That's a great healthy option if you're watching your carb intake. So, um, I cannot encourage people to go to Dizzy's enough because it is one of my favorite places to go to. Thank you. Um, they are open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, nice enough of them to give their restaurant uh, staff two days off in a row. I don't know if anybody knows how special that is in the industry, <laughs> but it's kind very, of a big deal. Very rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's kind why a lot of a big stay. deal. That's right. So, um, it's true. They're just right here on River Market Avenue and 3rd in the Commerce Building. Right. What's your building address? 200 River Market Avenue. 200 River Market right Avenue. Right across from Residence Hill. 
right across from the Residence Inn and right there, right in front of a trolley stop so that you cannot miss them. So I don't know about y'all. Purple I am, drapes. Yeah. Oh, and what a great patio that you can also, it's a pet friendly patio. Pet friendly patio. Pet friendly patio. And so there, um, a lot of people are calling, calling ahead before they make a vacation or even some other plans just to spend an afternoon in the River Market District. And the RV out. people too. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we bring our pets? And this is one of the many places in the River Market District that has a patio that will welcome a well-behaved leashed pet. We Please don't bring your shots. heathens. Yeah, yeah. There we don't even have bad ones. We just don't, we can't have them on the patio. Right. Mine are bad. They will never come to your patio. That's why, so. Mine are never there. <laughs> Very good. So I'm ready to taste this. Are y'all? Go for it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Plenty of cheese. Here's a spoon. I'm going to taste it. I'm starving now. I know, right? It's I cannot do I can't get up this early, Diana, torturous. and watch people cook. Let's, here, you go first. Well, I'm going to take a piece of this avocado no, before I you too. get it all. There we go. Because that's what I want. I've been looking at it. Oh, y'all, it smells so good. Another thing good. we did on Saturday when we ate this is squeeze. I love lime. If you really want to lighten it up and bright, it brightens the flavor immediately, it's sea salt and lime. Mm -hmm. So Get in it. No, I'm going to go last right. since I'm the one that cooked it. Ooh, those jalapenos are hot. That's good. That's, that's good really point. good. I would part. probably at home them? for my own personal taste not pepper it quite so much, yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm a weenie and that's the deal. Well, yep. and I have friends that want to put sriracha spin. on top of everything, mm. and I'm like, don't ruin my food. You know what? It's way better with lime, too. Well, and also, another hot. thing to keep in mind is like some people like different kinds of hot. So I will prefer a wasabi hot yeah, over a yeah, jalapeno, jalapeno hot. Mm -hmm. right. So I like a sriracha flavor more than I like a jalapeno flavor, just as a personal taste. I like hot unless it really, unless it's serious pain. I'll try it again with the, um, I think okay. this is Alan Spoon. Get Ooh. out of the, the, the jalapenos. And the, you can also you to make y'all cry on TV. That's mm -hmm. what. Oh no, I don't want to cry. Time. We don't want to do that. Mm. That's much better. Oh yeah. No. Mm -hmm. We got too much jalapeno. We got all the jalapeno, but I like it. Yeah, that's perfect. Wrong. Now I wouldn't complain about the jalapeno at all. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. But the Especially lime also brings it down. If you get down. that avocado in there with that bite of jalapeno, it kind of smooths it out a little bit. Absolutely. It kind of cools it, off. it out. Absolutely. Or the sour cream, that'll yeah. help balance it out also. Very good. Not okay, guys. Sour cream. Well, at home, y'all, if you can see, we have dressed this up. It's beautiful. We've tasted it. It's fantastic. Look at this beautiful layout of all these extra. For those of you at home, I'd like just to remind you that you can add just about anything that you'd like in your chili. Um, you can follow this recipe, take away, add to. We've discussed all that very thoroughly. We've also got a lot of options here that you can put out to use as additional toppings. If you're hosting a big, a big get-together, a football party, anything like that, it's just a great idea. Make a chili bar. Um, you might look at spending about four dollars a person to yeah, host to and, and you're going to impress your guests so you know throw some different chips leftovers. out there absolutely and eat it later we'd like to thank y'all for watching this week's episode of chop the rock and um stay tuned for our next one thanks very much for coming here thanks for having us yeah, yeah. Yes, thank, thank you very much, much.